Savior say, Thy strength indeed is more. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus, faith is all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. We thank you, Lord God, for the power of the blood of Jesus, even when it is red in color. It's the most powerful detergent. It washes our sins whiter than snow. Thank you, Father, for loving us to the extent of giving up your own, your one and only son, to die a cruel death on the cross, that whosoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Thank you, Father. We pray that this love of God will flow unto your people through the airwaves, as the service unfolds. Holy Spirit of God, we pray that you would minister to your people. Let there be a very special visitation today as people open doors to let you in, in their families, in their homes. Holy Spirit, bless your people like never before. We thank you and we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. We would like to thank God once again that he has given us another opportunity to worship him. You know, the Bible says that moments, times of refreshing are in his presence. And I pray that the Lord will refresh you. Maybe you have gone through a hectic week. You have had moments of anxiety. May the Lord refresh you. 
I want to thank God for you all, our friends, St. Franciscans and non-St. Franciscans, the body of Christ around the world. We know that you are joining us in worship. We think of you, our friends in the Americas, our friends in Europe. I know uh, our St. Franciscans in the diaspora who live in uh, the Jersey Islands, you never miss a service. We think about our friends in West Africa, in down south, our friends in Asia, the Far East. We bring you greetings. Uh, from here, St. Francis Chapel, Makere University, we love you, uh, regardless of proximity. And we pray that the Lord will bless you in a very special way today because there is something happening in the house of the Lord. So thank you for opening your homes to welcome Christ in the comfort of your homes. And may the Lord bless you. We'll now join in a moment of praise and worship. And please join us. Feel free to join us. You can stand. You, you worship. You know, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. I encourage you to rise up wherever you are, in your living room, uh, in your bedroom. If you're driving, you can just join us as we worship this morning. Hallelujah. Let's clap unto the Lord.
right now. The grace of God is reaching out to you in that situation. In your struggle, if you feel like it's getting so hard, I want you to know that the grace of God is reaching out to you this morning. He's going to lift you up. He's going to give you strength. He's going to walk with you. We worship you, God. We bless you. Just lift your voice and sing with us. strength. You are my 
depend on. reading of today is taken from Genesis chapter 3 and we are beginning from verse 1. Genesis chapter 3 beginning from verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the tree, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it, it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired, to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made, and made themselves long cloth. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. You will surely not die. The devil is a liar because people still die. People, they died. Adam and Eve died. People still die. The devil is a liar and a loser. So do not listen to his lies. We'll have some quick notices before we receive the sermon. And uh, this is to publish bands of marriage between Muchurezi, Paul, son of Reverend Canon, Jonathan and Mrs. Jolie Banahoro of Ntungamo District, and uh, Kahinga Esther, daughter of Rashio Swabale and Jennifer Nambiru of Mombasa. Muwezi Bamanya, Jimmy, son of uh, Bamanya, Edward and Eyo Boleko, Boleko Josephine of Kagadi District, and Naruoga Sylvia, daughter of Mr. Kimera John and the late Namaganda Annet of Kampala District. Kagwa James Calvin, son of the late Mwanga James, and Nakamwaji Edith, Edith of uh, Edith, I beg your pardon, of Wakiso District, and Namumbia Martha, daughter of Mr. Henry and Mrs. Rose Ngia of Wakiso District. Changa Andrew, son of the late James Muoya and Mrs. Loy Muoya of Budaka District. And Nakawoya Grace, daughter of 
Mr. Pony and Mrs. Eva. Chitiamu Wesi. Chitiamu Wesi of Masaka District. Edmund Aijuka, son of Mr. Frank and Mrs. Naomi uh, Berutia of Mitoma District, and Susan Atwonjeire, daughter of Mr. Jafeth and Mrs. Kellen Basinguzi of Kabale District. This is first time of asking. Nwagawa Samuel and Ankunda Violeta, Twebaze Kinan and Twichirize Flabia. This is the second time of asking. We had given details in the last, uh, uh, the last time we published the same. Last but not least, Opio Isaac and Najuna Kedeth, Waswa Martin, and Namwanga Claire. This is the third and last time of asking if anyone has a genuine reason as to why these who intend to tie the knot here at St. Francis Chapel should not, please do bring it to the attention of the chapel administration. And now it's my joy and uh, delight to introduce to you a preacher today. Um, this is one of our very own, so a St. Franciscan uh, for a, lo a long time. Mrs. Eva Kansime Atwine is an inspirational speaker. She is also a marriage therapist, parenting coach, relationship and life coach, mental health specialist. You're quite a coach of every aspect of life. Evas Nalongo is uh, currently the CEO Internal Center for Family Care, ICFC, which is a family uh, focused organization. Now, if you have family issues, you know uh, somebody you can refer to. And of course, she is married to one uh, husband who is a handsome gentleman. I know him, Engineer Moses Atwine, and God has blessed them with children. Uh, they, they are Nalongo and Salongo. She will tell us a little more about that if time permits. And uh, Evers is going to speak to us on a very important topic, facing the giant of temptation and compromise. May God bless you. Our audience uh, on Family Life, we appreciate you. And we thank God for Family Life TV and for your partnership with us. We do not take it lightly. And we pray that the Lord will enlarge your territory. Please welcome with me uh, Evers as she brings forth God's word. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you for this moment and thank you for the opportunity to serve you. And I pray that you'll use me. I'm a vessel this morning. Give me a message for your people. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Um, it's a joy for me to be here this morning. Thank you, Chaplain, and indeed the, whole, the entire chapel administration for inviting me to speak about this very, very important point. I bring greetings from my family, my immediate family. Chaplain, you introduced us, so I'll not spend more time on that. Um, I'm a Nalongo, that's a, that's a big title. That's, that's what I will emphasize. And um, I bring greetings also from our bigger family. I know you're out there listening and watching. Let me just go straight in the interest of time. We're talking about dealing with the giant, the monster of temptation, the monster of compromise that is eating up our society. When we talk about temptation and compromise, 
You don't need to go beyond the borders. Now I've gone very far. You don't need to go beyond your family to see the symptoms, the manifestations of compromise that are eating us up, that are denying us an opportunity to live life in its fullness. Just look at our families. Chaplain has introduced me as a family and marriage therapist. What is happening in families? All those, the challenges that we are having are symptoms, are manifestations of temptation, but most importantly, the giving in and compromising. Look at our structures in this country. Look at our nature of roads. Look at our school structures collapsing. Look at everything that is happening. Look at churches, the churches, the compromised gospel. Now there's a gospel going around, the gospel of grace. Just do everything, grace will cover you. We cannot talk about compromise and not talk about hatred. The wars that are raging in different parts of the world. All those are manifestations of temptation, giving in to temptation, which is compromise. The corruption, the corruptions. One person takes money that can build an entire road. All that is a manifestation of compromise. So when we talk about temptation, we're talking about engaging in, in short-term impulses. I, I, I just, I try to look up a definition, but of course you know what we are talking about. It is giving in, engaging, engaging in short-term impulses for enjoyment, but this threatens long-term goals. And I'm going to make reference to the scripture that was read to us. And of course, when we talk compromise, we are talking about accepting a standard that is lower than desirable. That's what we are talking about this morning. This is a monster that has eaten us up. When we talk about a standard, God has given us a standard of life. I don't have all the time to refer to scripture in every part of the Bible, but you know that God has given us a standard of life, the law of life, the commandments. We're not ignorant of how we should live our lives. It is very clear. This is given to us just the way it was given to Adam and Eve, the scripture we just read. So before I proceed, let me just make a few Three, actually, three important truths about temptation. Number one, temptation is real. It's real, friends. It's real among believers. It's real among non-believers. Temptation, we are not exempt. Some of you believers who are out there, we're not exempt. I pulled out scripture from John chapter 16 and, and verse 33. Jesus warns us, he said, in this world, you'll have trouble. In this world, you will have trouble. He didn't say non-believers will have trouble. He said all of us will have trouble. But he goes on to say, but take heart, I have overcome. Okay? So in this world, we are going to have circumstances that are going to tempt us to give in to compromise. They are there. And again, I mean, there are several. The list is endless. We suffer lack, just like any other. We have anger. We suffer. Um, there are circumstances that call our attention to unforgiveness. The, we suffer disease and illness. Christians and, Christ, and non-Christians alike. Believers and non-believers alike. We suffer intimidation, coercion to lower standards. Some of you who work in government departments, in different different work environments. We suffer peer pressure. We want to measure up. You've had statements of by 40, you need to have done this. This doesn't just affect a few people, it affects all of us. We suffer lust. I was challenging members of our fellowship. Um, you know, when we talk about lust, we never get testimonies in this area. 
I always, uh, I always <laughs> refer to the scripture in Genesis 39 about Joseph and, and, and when he was in Potiphar's house. You know what happened? You remember that account? You remember that experience when Potiphar's wife wanted to rape Joseph? Now, I've been asking people, did Potiphar's wife die with all her relatives, with all her sisters and cousins? We no longer have her around. I guarantee you we have so many Potiphar's wives everywhere in workplaces. And unfortunately, men suffer this all the time, but because they don't have the grace to share what they go through, they suffer silently. And then we say, oh, women are raped. But that's not a conversation for today. I'm talking about we suffer this. But we don't get lots of testimonies in this area. In our fellowships, we talk about praise the Lord. You know, thank God. You know, we bought a new car. But we never hear testimonies of a Potiphar's wife wanted to rape me. We suffer jealous. I mean, again, the list is endless. Complacence. Right? So I'm talking about temptation is real. That was my point number one. Point number two, temptation is not from God. Uh, again, we don't have all the, the, the luxury of time to read all the scripture, but during your free time, please read from James chapter 1, verse 13 to 18. When, tempt, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Verse 14, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away. Dragged away from what? From the standard, okay, by their own evil desires. This speaks to the choice we have, and I'm going to share a few things we need to do, and you realize we have a choice. Number three, we are called to resist, and that's why we are talking about temptation and compromise this morning. We wouldn't talk about it if we had no solution. But friends, I want to assure you there's something we can do about it. Again, very quickly, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. And it goes, We do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize, to understand what we go through, to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way. All manner of temptation, just as we are. Listen to this. Yet he did not sin. That's the core of our message this morning. That you can be tempted and you do not sin. And so based on this, I'm going to tell you, and again, I want to interest you to read scripture. Our forefathers, when you read scripture, we have a bunch of them that got tempted and first fell face down. They didn't, they didn't survive it. But we also have some who survived. Again, I don't have the luxury of time to talk about that. But we know what we have read. Adam and Eve, not a great example. Okay? They, they failed. Jo Jacob, he failed. Deception. Moses, aggression. He failed. You remember the story when he hit the road? He was overcome by anger. Again, the list is endless. But I also just, of course, we have to talk about David and lust. You know that story very well. But we have those that survived it. We have Job. You remember Job? Read Job 42. You will see how he emerged victorious. We read about Joseph and we read about Jesus. Now, I just want to tell you that all these accounts were written for us not to repeat the same mistakes for those who fell, but to pick good examples from those who survived. That's the whole point. And I just want to interest you to that. Okay. Before I share a few tips on how, or the key lessons on how we should handle or manage compromise, let me just give you one important fact. The scripture we read in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 3, verse 1. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any other a wild animal the Lord had created. And he said to the woman, did God really say? <laughs> That's a very, very fundamental issue. 
That's a very important issue. Every other day we are faced with this question. We know what to do. We know the commandments. We, we, we recite the, everything here. We know, we know. Just like Adam and Eve had received the, the commandments, right? The instruction on how to fashion their lives, but they received a question that got them thinking. And the question is, did God really say? This is something to reflect on, friends. I must tell you that your success or failure against temptation will depend on the answer you give to this question. And I want to challenge you. Can you give a straight yes? And so the devil says, did God really say that you can't take this money, but you need it? And so you go like, yes, he did. He did. Did God really say uh, that you cannot have fun? <laughs> you remember the fun? Uh, you know, you remember all the areas I've talked about, the areas we get tempted, adultery, you know, side chick. You can't have, and sometimes we think we are smarter. Did God really say, I cannot get into detail because of time, but I just want to challenge you, friends. What's your answer to this question. The devil is basically getting you thinking. He's getting you into a place where you have to give a second thought to the commandments, to the way of life that has been handed you. What's your answer? Sometimes we say yes, but it's non-assertive. We go like, yeah. Is it a yeah? Or is it a yes? I'm saying it for sure. Or is it a yeah, no? Sometimes it hangs in between there. What's your answer? And I want to challenge you once again. Your success or failure against temptation depends on this. Let me just pick out quick questions from the scripture we read. Number one. Number one, you want to overcome temptation? Do not judge life with your eyes. Eyes do not show you consequences. They give you a limited view. The scripture we read in chapter 3 of Genesis, right? We saw that, I think, verse 6. So when the woman saw the tree was good, saw the tree was good for life, that it was pleasant. I can see her go like, man, look at that fruit. Look at that tree. The devil, when he's tempting you, he doesn't show you consequences. She never thought about the curse that would come with this. The woman saw how beautiful. How many times, how many times have we judged life with our eyes? Right? I've been speaking to to married people, I mean, I, I support different organizations with workplace wellness programs. I can't tell you how many, how many, how much perversion is in the workplace. People are married, then they go with work, workmates. And I've been saying to them, that person is no better than your spouse. You're just running after makeup. Makeup. This is the makeup that... Uh, <laughs> this is the makeup that, uh, <laughs> that Eve was running after. Don't trust your eyes. Eyes do not show you consequences. Satan, when he's tempting you, he doesn't show you consequences. Okay? So let me ask you, whenever you're tempted, do you project beyond what your eyes can see to see the consequences? And I challenge you this morning... It's not worth it, friends. When you evaluate it a little more, when you look at the end of the matter, most likely you'll have more misery than you thought you'd get from the quick fixes. Number two, avoid conversation with the devil, the tempter. Right? Avoid conversation. When we read this scripture in Genesis, we see that the woman... The woman engaged with Satan. He says this, you respond. He says this, and, and in the meantime, she's not assertive. 
the devil says, did God really say? And so she goes like, yeah, yeah. She pulls out the scripture, but you know, the devil sees. He reads the body language and he sees she's not committal to what she's saying. Friends, Eve was literally negotiating with the devil. I want to ask you, please don't be vulnerable. Don't get in a place where you're discussing, you're conversing with the enemy. Most likely, you'll not succeed. Number three. Number three. Speak the word of God. If you are to discuss with the devil, to converse, make sure you're speaking the word of God. No flimsy excuses. Right? Now, I just pulled this from, from the scripture we didn't read. It's in Luke chapter 4, the temptation of Jesus. You remember that? He says this, Jesus says back, it is written. You have to speak the written word of God if you're going to survive temptation. Okay? If you, even when you read Genesis 39, Joseph spoke back to Potiphar's wife. She said, you, I cannot do such a thing. Right? And so you have to speak assertively and speak the word of God. The word of God carries power. Number four, number four, beware of the 80 20 percent trap. What do I mean? This lady fell for what she already had. If you read scripture, Genesis chapter three, she's running about a tree that looks pleasant, right? When you read scripture, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 27, the account give, it gives us an account that God had given them a garden with trees which looked beautiful, right? And pleasant in the eyes. Same thing. Sometimes we want to top up God's blessings. We try to top up. You have 80%, you go to look for 20 and you lose everything. I want to challenge you, please don't try to top up God's blessings. A friend of ours lost a big job. He was taking a bribe of 200,000. That's what happens, topping up God's blessings. Number five, number five, avoid succumbing to pressure. You want to survive temptation and fight a good fight? Avoid succumbing to pressure. I love this. Did you hear that in an attempt to be like God, <laughs> then they fell? Do you understand? How many, how many times have we succumbed to pressure to be like? Now, when you read this, I was wondering, again, please, people who know more English than I do, tell me the difference between, the difference between being created in God's image and being like God. Do you understand? Probably the other one is bigger. Right? You're already created in God's image. What are you looking for? But I want to challenge us, friends. Don't try to fit in. University students, don't try to fit in. Keep, I've been encouraging people as a life coach. Please keep within your lane. Keep your lane. Keep your lane. We cannot all fit in one lane. Keep your lane. God has a good plan for each one of us. Resist and resist. I have one more and I will conclude. Let me just share one more from Joseph's story. And so it's, I, I want to tell you that you, cannot, you can only survive temptation if you have a personal value system. Do you know what that means? A standard that guides your life. And in this standard, we have what we call non-negotiables. According to Joseph, <laughs> adultery was a non-negotiable, right? When we talk about a personal value system, you're saying this is right, this is wrong. Do you hang in between? Some of us are in the gray area. You cannot survive. And so he said, how can I do such a wicked thing? And he calls it by its name and sin against God, he was also accountable to God. Finally, finally, friends, I want to assure you that resisting temptation can sometimes carry with it suffering. Suffering. Sometimes it comes with suffering. 
You resist this, you suffer. I have numerous examples I could share, but I don't have all the time. Students who are um, blackmailed because they refuse to give in to lecturers. I mean, so much at work, you refuse a bribe, and they say, what's wrong with this person? It comes with suffering. Joseph suffered. You remember? He went to prison. Can you imagine somebody lying? Children call it forging things on you. And then it succeeds. Do you understand? It succeeds. And it seems like this person is succeeding. Sometimes it comes with suffering. But it ends with a good story. I loved soccer until marriage took the fun of it from my life because I married someone who didn't care about soccer. And when you're in between boys, I'm in between boys, Absalom and, 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 and Obed, you can't avoid some of the tomboy tendencies. So I used to love soccer. I knew all the players, I knew their names, I knew their relatives and their hairstyle. I did until I got married. But one thing I'm pulling out of this, and this is my conclusion, is that soccer lovers out there, you have seen sometimes the first half can look like you lost. I watched soccer with passion, and sometimes I almost got a heart attack. You know, women with emotions. But it can come off like you have lost the first half. Joseph lost the first half. <laughs> right? He lost the first half. But praise the Lord, the second half gave him lots of rewards. I want to end it here, friends, and call you to win in the second half. Hang in there, resist temptation. You can suffer, you can lose a job, but the God we serve is bigger than we think. And so praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your message. I prayed that you would speak, and I believe you have spoken. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give God the praise for this powerful message. Thank you, Nalongo. You have done justice to the subject, and uh, we don't have time for any recap of any emphasis, the message was clear. The, the young people would say she was on point. You now know, gentlemen, that you don't have to run after makeup. <laughs> I got that one. I got that one. And my daughter does a lot of uh, makeup for people. Uh, so don't, don't uh, in fact, I agree with Nalongo that our wives are better. They're more beautiful than those we run after. And uh, we don't have to help God. We don't have to assist God in, in, in what he has already done for us. We, we bless the Lord that there is Jesus who over, he was tempted in every way, but he never sinned. So being tempted is okay. It is okay. It is okay for you to be tempted. In fact, if you're not tempted, then you are probably uh, not in this world. You see, the sin is when you fall into the temptation. But remember, there's an escape route. Jesus overcame, and he will give you the ability to overcome as well. The Word of God says that resist, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. In other words, the ability for the enemy to flee from you is in the spirit of submission to God. We thank God for the message that has come. And uh, for our um, Family Life television audience, we'd like to ask God to bless you now before... Uh, you, uh, this program is, is switched. And so I'm, I'm going to ask for God to bless you. I'm going to pray for you. But we thank you, Family TV, for partnering with us. And of course, we, 
we, we recommend this channel uh, for families. It is a TV station in Uganda that broadcasts clean and morally upright content, which is based on Christian values. So we bless the Lord for you, and I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone watching Family Life TV Uganda, I ask for your blessing upon them and upon their families in the name of Jesus. I also ask for your blessing upon family television that you enlarge its territory of influence. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, beloved, and remain with you now and forever and ever. And God's people said, Amen. We'll see you again. And uh, to God be the glory. And now we will uh, sing to the Lord as we give our offertory and tithes, thanksgiving offering to the Lord. And uh, please do reach out to your phone and follow the information displayed on your screen. Uh, remember, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, bless me, bless somebody who has given, bless us the way you blessed Jabez and enlarge our territory. We thank you for everyone who has given. We thank you for those who are here to give. Lord God, you have said in your word that give and it shall be given back to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall be added to your lap. And so, Lord, Bless all those who have given, enlarge their territories. And we pray for those who are not able to give, that, Father, you would provide for them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And now, beloved, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord God Almighty Bless you on a daily basis. That on a daily basis, he will load you with benefits in accordance with his word. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the blessing which makes rich and which comes with no sorrow, may that blessing be your portion on a daily basis, bringing to fruition all your dreams, prospects, and aspirations. 
May that blessing be upon uh, the president of this country, Uganda, upon the, the cabinet ministers and all those who serve under the president. May that blessing be upon your servant, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, as he leads this church in a very, very difficult time. We pray that that blessing will be upon every family that has received your word today and remain with you all now and forever and ever. Amen. We bless the Lord for this beautiful time we have had, and we know that there has been a great visitation in your family. Thank you again for being part of the worship, and we look to you, uh, forward to another moment of fellowship with you on Wednesday during our midweek service. A big thank you to Nalongo for bringing forth a very powerful message and for the praise team, of course, and to God be all the glory. We'll have a recession with him, and uh, until now and then, it is uh, goodbye. Yes, sir.